Hello everyone and welcome to another really wild game from round 3 of the Tata Steel 2021 uh, in a game between Alireza Firuja and David Anton Giharo. Uh, it's, uh, the, the previous game we showed was way too complicated so I thought be best to show another one today uh, so you know we get, uh, we, we get uh, some fun out of it. So uh, Alireza has the white pieces like I said and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight f6, knight f3, d5 and Alireza goes for bishop to f4. Uh, yes, now Alireza also plays the London system. Uh, we have c5 by Giharo, uh, e3 and now knight to c6. We have knight b to d2, uh, pre uh, uh, leaving the, the c3 square unoccupied so you can always play c3 if needed. c captures on d4 by uh, David Anton, e captures and now bishop to f5 and here bishop to b5. Uh, developing the bishop, pinning that knight, and rook to c8. And here uh, there uh, are some games where knight to e5 was played, but here c3 is a new move. So already in this game, as of move 8, we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see what's happening here. Uh, we have e6 uh, and queen to e2 now, uh, leaving the option of castling kingside, castling queenside, maybe not castling at all, we'll see. Uh, knight to d7 uh, and now h4. Alireza starts uh, attacking that kingside. He's expecting bishop e7 and castles. Uh, we have a6 pushing the bishop back and bishop to d3 now. Captures on d3, queen captures and now bishop to e7. And uh, like we've uh, seen many times so far when uh, white goes uh, for the... Uh, for the London system, king to f1. Like we said, king f1 is the new castles. So you want to keep your king safe, but also have the option of having the rook on the h file, pushing that pawn and maybe using it for, for attacking purposes. Uh, queen to b6 now, going after the b2 pawn. And here it's very tricky because you're going after the b2 pawn, but if you defend the b2 pawn, then uh, you pretty much allow black to trade queens because the queen and king are on the same diagonal. So here Alireza goes for rook to b1 and David Anton immediately goes for a queen trade. So queen to b5, uh, it allows white to double black's b pawn, uh, but this is uh, this is what David Anton went for. So captures, captures, and now a3. And it seems like a very timid game uh, as the queen's already off the board, but uh, you could not be more wrong. So uh, let's see wh what happens. We have h5 by black preventing white from further expanding here with, with the g4. Knight to b3 uh, and now f6, strengthening that center. At some point, black will want to play e5 and bust open the center. So rook to e1, covering the e file, and now king to f7, uh, defending the pawn here and preparing to bring the rook into the game. Knight to c1. Uh, and now knight to f8. Uh, the, all knights are still in the game, so you have to put them on uh, on optimal squares to for maximum damage. Knight to d3, and now knight to g6. Again, keeping an eye on that e5 square. Black still hopes for, uh, to get that e5 in. Bishop back to g3, not allowing knight to capture it, and now knight to a5. The knight will come to c4, and it's going to be a very active square for the black knight. We have king to g1. Now you have to castle artificially so the other rook can also enter the game. Uh, we have knight to c4 and now uh, rook to e2. Uh, th this knight can now move as the b2 pawn is also defended by the rook. Rook h back to e8 and now king to h2. Now the rook can come into the game. Bishop to f8 and now rook h to e1. Again putting a lot of pressure on this pawn here. Uh, and now b6. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, we have king back to g1. Uh, we have rook to a8 and bishop to f4. Uh, Alireza checking to see if uh, if David Anton is maybe interested in capturing that bishop, but he just ignores it. Rook back to c8 and now g3. Alireza preparing king to g2 to, uh, to improve his position a little bit. Rook to c6 and now king to g2. Uh, we have bishop to e7 and now knight to g1. Not uh, a lot of active plans here. Basically, both both of them are just uh, going after that e5 square. Uh, but now Alireza has to try something different. He has the white pieces and he is, uh, I, I, I don't think it's 100 points, but almost 100 points higher rated than David Anton. So, of course, he wants to push for something more here. Uh, we have bishop to f8 uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, bishop to f8 and now knight to h3 by Alireza. Bishop back to e7, knight back to g1. And David Anton uh, happy with a draw uh, with the black pieces here. But Alireza says, uh, no, let's let's continue a little bit more. Knight to f3, bishop back to e7, 
uh, David Anton says, okay, then uh, play something else. And Alireza goes for something else. He plays king to h3. And now he's going to go for this very tricky g4 move. And here all, all hell will break loose, as you'll see. Uh, black keeps repeating moves, rook to a8, and now bishop to c1, defending that pawn once again, rook back to e8, and now finally g4. And now what does white get by doing this? We have h captures on g4, king captures, and now rook to h8, going after this h4 pawn, and here uh, Alireza pushes it to h5. And this is a, a, an incredibly tricky position uh, where uh, David Anton uh, needs to decide what to do, whether to go back with the knight, or to maybe go for this tricky f5 move, but you kind of never want to play f5. You want to, uh, what you want to do is you want to play e5 if, if possible. If possible, knight to f5. Uh, if if it doesn't uh, get bring you advantage, it's gonna bring advantage to white because now it weakens all of these squares and it's just uh, it, it looks ugly. But it was possible. Uh, but it's very hard to realize why. We're gonna show why because after king to g3, yes, you can capture the h5 pawn, but now b3, and this is now incredible incredibly tricky uh, because if you move the knight for example knight to c6 then you have a problem here a fork uh, incoming knight to c th knight to d to e5 check captures captures and now black loses the rook here uh, on c6 uh, but it's only if after b3 you move the knight but this is why it's such a tricky line here black needs to go bishop to d6 check and only after the king moves now you move the uh, now you move the knight and now the bishop and knight are both gu guarding the e5 square but now the rook no longer guards the e6 pawn so here white would capture on e6 you would get knight h4 check captures captures and we would get this position that's uh very equal white does have both rooks on the open e file but the the dark square bishop here covering all of these squares there's not much for white to do here so this was definitely in the position for black but uh, incredibly hard to find so david anton goes back knight to f8 and now knight to f4 bringing both of the knights here to guard the g6 square we have rook um uh, bishop back to d8 and now rook to h1 black uh, just has to wait and see what alireza will do we have rook to g8 now with ideas of pushing this pawn opening up the g file so now knight to h4 keeping an eye on the g6 square we have bishop to c7 now attacking this knight but of course alireza doesn't allow the capture knight f to g6 and now uh, if you capture here it's uh, it's a very ugly thing to do for example if captures captures with check king f8 you're going to move the knight, you're going to bring the rook to h7, and it's going to be a, a very difficult position uh, for, for black to play. So instead, uh, David Anton goes knight to d7, and now rook h to, uh, rook h to e1. Again, going after that uh, e-file. Uh, we have rook to e8, black does the same, and now finally bishop to f4, uh, offering a trade of dark square bishops. We have bishop captures on f4, knight captures on f4, and now rook to d6. Uh, asking white again how do you how do you go for some sort of a breakthrough here and first alireza before going forward goes backwards knight to h3 he doesn't want to run into some uh, nasty, nasty checks because you're you're in line of this check uh, the knight uh, is in reach of the white king so the king is much safer there and only then will alireza try something else knight back to f8 and now knight f back to g6 and again uh, a very tricky position where again it's uh, incredibly uh, risky to go for this capture here because now after h captures and g6 with check uh what do you do here uh we're going to show what happens because it's very interesting if king to e7 then you just run into knight f5 check and you lose the exchange and in this position uh, very likely the game and if you don't go to e7 if you go to f8 it's not much better first you kick away the knight with b3 and after the knight moves now you run into knight to f5 and this is a very very complicated position but it is completely winning for white the knight cannot be captured because of this but you're also uh, you also have some very sneaky ideas of moving the king rook to h1 and the rook to h8 checkmate it's pretty crazy for example if if black moves the rook as the rook is under attack you're gonna play king g2 and now there really isn't all that much you can do if if rook to e7 you might even offer the rook still rook to h1 goes after the checkmate and you have to start running away king e8 you're gonna go rook h8 check king d7 and now rook to a8 with the idea of rook a7 check but also just going after the knight on a3 
and the position is now uh, dead lost. Uh, if, you, if you capture the knight, then just rook a7 check, rook can block, but now you're gonna capture everything. Captures, captures, and captures, and after the king moves, wherever, it doesn't really matter, you're just gonna go rook captures and g7, move the rook, and then easily checkmate the black king. So this is what happens again if the knight is captured. So of course, uh, knight to h7 was played and now Alireza goes f4. Keeping an eye on that e5 square, strengthening that as this is kind of the theme of this game and also keeping an eye on the g5 square, not allowing this knight any, any checks. So rook d back to d8 and now rook to g1. Now Alireza shifts the attention of both rooks uh, to the g file. Knight to d6, and now rook e to g2. Now, if the knight moves, uh, then the rook captures with deadly purpose. So uh, you know you, you can't really allow that. I, even if something like a 94, 95 check, you pick up this, you win this. Uh, black's position just falls apart. So here, rook to g8, and now comes knight to e7. And this this is possible because the knight on h7 is undefended. So again, if you capture it, then uh, again, black's position just falls apart. Captures, captures, captures. You lose the knight as well. And uh, now it, it's just a very, very easy position to play for white. So instead, after knight d7, we have knight to g5 with check. David Anton tries one last resort, maybe close the g file, at least for the moment, uh, but it doesn't help him all that much. f captures on g5, we have king captures on e7, and now g captures on f6 with check. Uh, this pawn is now also hanging, so king captures, and now rook to g6 with check. King f7, and now knight to f3, preparing to kick away the king even further. Uh, not a lot for black to do here. Rook d to f8 was played, but now knight to e5 with check. King e7 and only now rook captures on g7 with check. So uh, for the last 20 moves, uh, this is what Alireza was planning. Uh, we have rook captures, rook recaptures with check, and now king to f6. And now uh, as the rook is attacked, Alireza pushes h6. Looks tricky as the pawn can be attacked, but it's not a problem. Rook to h8. And now, now, <laughs> now the brilliant king to g4, giving up the pawn, but taking away these squares from the black king. And this is just awesome. Rook captures on h6 was played. Uh, but now feel free to pause the video and win this game for Alireza in the quickest possible way. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the uh, unstoppable rook to d7. And also for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's a uh, rook to d7. This is what Alireza played and it was in this position on move 61 that uh, David Anton Guijaro resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So the knight is under attack, the knight will be lost and of course the knight cannot move. If you move the knight, whatever you do, rook goes back to f7 with checkmate. That's why I said that uh, a few moves back uh, after this uh, rook to h8 was played attacking the pawn. King g4 incredibly strong because it takes away these two squares away from the black king and then everything else is just super easy. Rook here and game over. The knight has no squares or you could continue but then you just lose the knight and you're, you're not gonna have much fun uh, being a piece down. Uh, so yeah, a really crazy game. Uh, some complications not as complicated as the previous one so I thought maybe just uh, show a, a, a nice simpler one to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, enjoy enjoy the day a bit more. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there's one more game we're, we'll be showing from round three, but we're going to show that one tomorrow, and then we may check the standings. Uh, I would like to thank Brian Flynn, Frank Banner, Gerard Homa, uh, Thomas uh, Bar Bardauskas, and Vinicius Pereira for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.